you know, they did increase the, the Conab corn production estimates. Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on the Comstock channel. I'm Marlon Bowling. As always, make sure you like these videos, subscribe to them by clicking on that bell icon down below, and make sure you share these videos with others as well. By the way, I sure appreciate you guys doing that. Uh, it has really helped us expand our audience and we continue to grow. Still one of the fastest growing ag podcasts out there. Thanks to you. So thanks for all the help. My uh, very special guest today is the president of Comstock Investments. We have Matthew Cruz with us right now. And the reason I'm so excited, Matthew, to have you on board today is we actually got new CONAB numbers from Brazil. Uh, I guess, in essence, that would be kind of similar to our USDA here, right? Um, they came out with estimates for their crop. And the timing is good because you are actually in Brazil right now. For the benefit of our viewers out there that may not be familiar, you actually have family in Brazil and uh, your family has a lot of farm ground in Brazil. So you have a very close connection there. And I, I wanted to get your take on the CONAM numbers and how they compare to what you have been seeing since you've been there. Thank you, Marlon. The CONAM numbers came out this morning and uh, I, you know, I think they're in line with what I've been saying, Comstock has been saying for quite a while. They uh, actually decreased their soybean uh, production estimates by uh, 300,000 metric tons. Uh, they came in at 147.3 million metric tons overall for the soybean crop. Um, you know, the USDA has uh, stubbornly been uh, slowly dropping their numbers, but there's still a pretty big gap, you know, nearly 6 million metric ton difference between CONAB and that of the USDA. Uh, USDA had a chance to kind of catch up here on their latest WASDE report and they came in at uh, 153 million metric tons. So there's still, a, you know, a fairly sizable difference. Uh, I, you know, I still think that the USDA will come down, but it's, it's been disappointing how slow that they've, you know, been doing that, uh, you know, at, at this rate, you know, if they keep dropping 1 million metric ton uh, per month for each report, you know, we're going to, you know, really not get to uh, what the actual numbers are until the end of the year. And so um, a lot of that, uh, uh, you know, the, the CONAB, they actually found another 600,000 acres from last month's report. And so overall, they increased the, the soybean production acres to 113.6 million acres compared to the U.S. at uh, 87 and a half is what they're projecting. And so, however, they uh, decreased uh, the uh, yield estimates um, overall by about three tenths of a bushel. They dropped the overall Brazilian um, yield estimate to 47.5 bushels per acre. And a lot of that was due, came from the southernmost state of Rio Grande do Sul, where they're having, or they have experienced a lot of flooding. Uh, and so that's where most of that, that came from. And so at this point, I don't, I don't know that that gap is going to, uh, uh, get that much narrower unless the USDA, um, you know, drops their numbers further. I think, uh, you know, CONAB, um, I think is pretty set with where they're at because the, the, you know, the, the harvest is over and, and kind of has been the bulk of it has been for, you know, six weeks by now. And so I don't know what, uh, uh, rel revelation they're going to have going forward. And so, that's kind of where we're at on the soybean side. Seems kind of interesting to me, Matthew, that uh, we actually have now had several U.S. soybean export sales. And it makes me wonder if, if China believes the lower CONAB production numbers versus what USDA has, that maybe they think things would get a little tight later on. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, of course, you know, we're, we're fighting over the, the China soybean import market, right? It's, you know, for the most part, uh, it, you know, the U.S. and Brazil produce, you know, 85% of uh, the soybeans in the world. And so um, that's something that we're looking at closely is the Brazil's export market and what they're actually doing. And um, it was notable to me, and I've, I've talked about this in, in subsequent reports, that, you know, the April, May are their peak season for, for exports and soybean exports in Brazil. And they actually came in uh, at about 13.5 million, million metric tons for Brazil soybean exports in May. And it was uh, closer to 15 and a half million metric tons last year at this time. So, 
you know, it's, it's highly suspect for me that they're um, coming in 2 million metric tons less this season if they're supposed to have this big crop that the USDA is claiming. And so um, it, it just it just doesn't seem to be there. And, and the fact that they're, you know, aren't exporting as much as they are last year, um, you know, in their peak season. And so obviously there's time will tell, but, uh, uh, you know, that's kind of what's happened so far. Uh, if you could walk us through the corn data on your graphic that you have here. And I'm intrigued because you say there are three corn crops. I was thinking there were two. So walk us through this. Explain the three different crops. A few years ago, Conab started to dis distinguish a third corn crop. You know, it's very small, but uh, it, it comes at a different time in the year in a different region, more in the northeast. And so, um, you know, overall, they're uh, this season they're projected to produce about four and a half billion bushels on roughly fifty-one million acres of corn in total. Um, obviously, the the bigger crop is the second corn crop um, that's grown dramatically. It was relatively insignificant 20 years ago. Um, the first corn crop, you know, amounts to uh, just under a billion bushels. And that's, you know, that really hasn't changed much. That first corn crop in the last 20 years, you look at, at what it's done. All the growth has come from the second crop of corn. You know, that's where you're getting three and a half billion bushels. And so, um, you know that and that's happening right now they're harvesting that crop uh, as we speak you know they're roughly i think 15 percent complete overall so it's still in its early stages and it'll keep you know it'll for the most part uh you know they'll they'll harvest through the end of july early august and so there is a third crop it's it doesn't amount to too much there's only uh you know about 100 million bushels uh from that third crop um, but it is something that I think can can continue to grow as well over time. And so um, that's the last thing we need is, is a third crop, right? Because the second one has grown dramatically. But uh, uh, I, I don't see the the third crop really taking off the way the second one has. You know, that uh, the second crop corn, that's that's kind of the where they do the rotation with the soybeans in most of the center west region. And so it's on a very large area. And so as that soybean production expands in Mato Grosso in the center west region, they're they're planting that second crop um, to corn. And so that's where uh, why they've seen all that growth, because it's just kind of followed the coattails of the soybean crop. So it doesn't look like there's a lot of impact that will come out of the new CONAB numbers on the corn, at least maybe not as much as what the U.S. agricultural weather will be. And then maybe what the new acreage number will be on the 28th of June. Well, yeah, I, I think that they, you know, they did increase the, the CONAB corn production estimates um, by two and a half million metric tons. They came in at 114.6 million metric tons. So it, it was a, you know, somewhat uh, significant boost, but it's still quite a long ways from where the USDA is at. They're at 122 million metric tons overall. And so um, I don't, I just don't see CONAB increasing it much from here. You know, I mean, the USDA is going to argue that they want to see more yield data. Um, that's fine. But, uh, you, you know, right now, both uh, CONAB and uh, there's a, a state aid agency for Monte Grosso called IMEA, and they more or less have come uh, agreed on what Monte Grosso's production is at between 45 and 45.8 million metric tons. And since Monte Grosso makes up, um, you know, over half of the second crop corn production, uh, that you know, there has to be some major surprise going on there for the overall numbers to increase to what the USDA has has them at. And so, either you know, the USDA knows something that the local state agency doesn't know, which I just find hard to believe. And so, um, and, and I don't think that the USDA can get to those numbers uh, without the help of Monte Grosso. And so uh, I, I just I just think that the USDA has to, you know, face reality and eventually make additional cuts over time. What's the problem is, when is that going to happen? If they do it, you know, six months from now and kind of drag their feet the way they have with the soybean estimates, you know, it's not going to do a lot of good to, you know, provide rallies to the market. Well, our audience might be interested to know <clears throat> what your Brazilian farm family is up to these days. 
what kind of field work are they actually involved in now? Well, they're probably the main activity right now, and, and one of the reasons we're here is actually the coffee. And so this is the prime coffee harvesting window. And uh, among other things, we, uh, you know, we produce coffee and we actually export some of the specialty coffee to the United States directly to uh, U.S. roasters. And uh, so we're right in the middle of that, that coffee harvest right now. We actually have a couple of customers uh, of ours coming down to meet us uh, later next week. And so that's kind of the main activity on the farm. Uh, my family has a dairy as well. And of course that, uh, you know, is 24 seven, 365 days a year. Uh, we have a little bit of uh, second crop corn, uh, but we haven't quite begun the harvest there. But I think, you know, here in the next couple of weeks, we'll start that as well. So I think the main activity right now is just the coffee harvest. Well, Matthew, I, I know you're very busy, but thanks for taking a little time to get us updated and uh, talk about these new Conab production estimates that came out of Brazil and, and give us a firsthand perspective from what's going on right there in the country today. So best of luck to you. Thanks for the update and uh, stay safe out there. We look forward to you being back here before too long. That's our president, Matthew Cruz, reporting direct from Brazil. And that'll do it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining us. For producer Brianne Hendrickson, I'm Marlon Bowling. We'll catch you next time right here on the Comstock Channel. Thanks for joining us on our Comstock YouTube channel. Don't forget, you can also find us on Facebook and TikTok as well. Futures trading involves risk. The risk of loss in trading futures and or options is substantial, and each investor and or trader must consider whether this is a suitable investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results.